Barbie has a hole in her left hand, punched out over her ring finger. It's small for humans, but it's pretty disfiguring for her. Shame, it eats up most of her hand. In the hole, you plug in her plastic ring, this teeny weeny fizz pop with a stick to go through the hole and a tiny bobble on top, which is her rock. You plug the stick into the hole and then Bobby is married. <laughs> Except Bobby cannot get married. Mattel won't allow it, but she is permitted to imagine it. The ring in her finger hole is the... Well, it's imaginary. It's real for little girls, but actually it's only in Bobby's mind. I lost that tiny plastic ring on set for the advert for wedding Bobby and got fired. <laughs> The story of the ad, basically, is that Ken picks Barbie up for a date at her house. Then he and Barbie are driving, they go to the beach, and then Ken proposes. Barbie looks down, and you see the hand of a little girl popping the ring into her finger socket. Barbie's engaged. <laughs> then pan out to see the whole girl playing with Ken and Barbie, waggling them around on the floor of her room. You only see the whole girl at the end of the ad, but her hands are in every shot. That is a Mattel rule. Dolls do not move without assistance. Wedding Barbie comes with ring accessory, car, and Ken dolls sold separately. <laughs> on the morning of the shoot, when I thought things had been going pretty good, the director approached Barbie's stylist and I, where we stood, apart from the action, but available. I need your help. He was talking to the stylist. The kid, she can't make Ken look sexy. Oh shit. Ken needs to be way more sexy with Barbie. We stared at the kid. She was busy getting her fingers repainted. She looked, well, she looked like a six-year-old. Then the stylist said, mm, I'll pop another button on Ken's shirt. And the director said, mm, fantastic. And they scuttled off. And then the stylist handed me the tiny ring. Hold this. Then someone else told me to run to the truck to fetch another pair of sunglasses for Barbie. The ones we had weren't right. I came back with four pairs as options, but somewhere between the studio and the truck, the ring went AWOL. Do you know how many Barbie accessories fit on a truck? Yep. Thousands. Tiny champagne buckets, tiny handbags, tiny Fenty coffees the size of a suppository in an adult hand. I never found the ring. When it became apparent that I, the intern, had lost Barbie's engagement ring, it became clear that there was no replacement because I asked, can't we just use another ring? <laughs> Yeah, no replacement rings. The director looked at me as if I was mentally deficient, and by lunchtime, I was fired. <laughs> well, I'm telling you this, because this year I ended up in a bar in Lanesburg at about 6.30 on New Year's morning. Pretty despicable, I know, but I wasn't ready for home time. There were three people left at the bar when I arrived. The barman, an old guy sitting at the bar, and a young woman dancing around on the floor. The young woman stared at the old guy, kind of summoning him to the floor with her fingers. But then he'd just stare right back at her without moving. And then she'd spin around. Just come, come, uh, uh. <laughs> she had to pick up her feet each time she moved. The floor was so sticky, just... <laughs> The barman yelled, go sexy! And then the old guy yelled it too, go sexy! And then I recognized him. <laughs> and 
then I recognized her. I asked the old guy, how do you two know each other? And he said, wow, I knew her since she was a kid. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, we knew each other professionally. And then he raised his glass to my wife. And the barman, he raised his glass to your wife. And the woman, she raised her hands above her head, smiling. There was a tiny rock on her finger. To me. <laughs> to me. <laughs>